want to see you. Today's topic is healthy selfishness. What it means to be selfish in a healthy way, right? So when we hear the term selfish, it has a negative connotation to it. Um, and there is a way to be selfish in a way that is detrimental to other people and to yourself. However, that's not what we're talking about today. And if for those of you who like you see this topic, you see this title and there's something inside you that's like, hmm, I think I need to listen to this. It's because you probably know that you have been putting everybody else's needs or doing what other people say you should do, what you think you should do, and you've been trying to manage a bunch of things at the same time and you're feeling drained, lethargic, burnt out, angry, frustrated, then you know this message is for you. Okay. I'm also going to give you an exercise to do um, that I recently took some of my clients through. So make sure that you have a pen and a paper. I'm gonna open this up in Facebook to see if I can see you guys here. Hey, Krista, um, so good to see you. Okay, so this is an eye-opening exercise that I'm gonna give you and we're gonna to get to it quickly, but I want your mind to be open to this concept, okay? When we have a selfish mind, a selfish mind, meaning in a healthy way, this actually helps you and it helps the other people that are in your life. Now, listen, when I say it, 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 it is beneficial to the other people in your life. I mean, the people that actually matter and that need to have your attention and deserve to have your attention and focus. We'll talk about that later. I'm not talking about, um, everybody in your circle, right? Everybody in your uh, community, because not everybody needs the kind of focused attention that you have been giving them. If you've been feeling drained, this message is going to make some sense to you. So it's a selfish mind on the inside versus a selfish attitude, right? An attitude is very different than a mindset and a state of being. So when you can be selfish enough to focus on, for example, your, your purpose, your goals, your vision, your business, your sport, whatever it is that really lights the fire in you and, you know, makes you a better person, makes you happier. When you can be selfish enough to really put that at the forefront of your focus, then you are able to give more to others, right? You've got nothing to give to anyone when you're not giving anything to yourself. And I know that you guys get that, but I want to talk about it in a real tangible way, okay? Because the truth of, uh, the, truth of the matter is, for some of us, for some of us, and this could be you, right? This could be you. You're worried so much about being liked by others, about not rocking the boat, about being perceived a certain way, that you're saying yes to a bunch of stuff that you really don't want to say yes to. You're taking on things and responsibilities and energies that aren't actually contributing in a positive way to your life and are actually sucking your energy, your time, and your resources, right? because you're more worried about other people's approval. You're more worried about, again, being liked, what people will say about you, not rocking the boat. You're trying to be everything to everyone. Does that sound like you? And if it does, I can tell you right now, you're either exhausted or you're on your way to being exhausted and or bitter and resentful. And that doesn't support you, your goals, or anyone else in your life. Now, for some of us, the way this looks is it's about being in control, right? We're so focused on controlling everything around us in our lives and others that we begin focusing too much of our energy on too many other things and people, right? We're focusing too much energy on trying to control outside circumstances instead of controlling ourselves. Now, I'm going to share with you my personal example of this. This is how I knew recently 
literally last week that it was time for me to be really intentional with some healthy selfish time right moms you can totally relate to this right now during the quarantine we've been wearing way more hats than we already wear right so for me it's like my, I'm wearing my the, the hat in my business, right? I'm building my business. I'm coaching my clients. I'm managing my team. I actually have people that I'm mentoring as well that takes up a lot of my time. And on top of that, I'm training for my pro debut in my sport, which takes morning and evening training. It takes a lot of meal prep and I'm cooking for my family. The cleaners can't come, so I'm cleaning the house, right? And my husband helps, right? And he also travels for work several uh, weeks um, every other month or every month. <clears throat> so on top of that, homeschooling, right? So homeschooling, my 10-year-old plus our 16-year-old uh, son is with us as well, my stepson, and so supporting there. So all you guys can relate because all of us are wearing a lot more hats right now. And that's fine, except that I noticed in me, right, I gave you the two examples, you're either trying to please everybody and being liked, so you're taking on a lot, or you're trying to control everybody. And that's what I was starting to do. I was starting to um, get uh, all my focus on controlling everything, you know, having this done this way and that done that way. And everything started to trigger me and everybody started to trigger me. So listen up, if you're somebody who you know, control is a big thing for you. And let's be honest, that's why you get a lot of success in your life. But it can also, everything that, that makes us really good at certain things can also be, you know, it's a double-edged sword. So if you're someone like me, who you're driven, you're goal-oriented, you're able to get stuff done, everybody comes to you, um, you know, when they need that kick in the ass and, and they need to get things going and get some action behind it, you're, you, you're driven. You are uh, what we call um, uh, a controller, a driver. So if that is you, Here's how you know you need some healthy, selfish time. Healthy, selfish time. See how that attitude of, of controlling everybody is very selfish because you're doing it to serve you, to make you more comfortable. So that's how you know that it's time for you to carve out some healthy time is when you start realizing everybody's annoying you, you're starting to get uh, frustrated, angry, and you're trying to control everything out here instead of right here. That was the sign for me. So I said to my husband, I explained it. He got it right away, of course, right? Because they're starting to feel it. And so nobody benefits. And I said, I've got too many irons in the fire right now. And see, I'm consistent enough in my life with my sport, with my business, with the things in my family that I'm able to quickly notice when I'm starting to leak energy and things, things are um, not flowing, right? This is one of the reasons it's really important for you to be consistent with things so that you can see where the breakdown is. Okay. So my husband got it right away. And I said, listen, I'm, I'm lucky enough or I don't say lucky enough, I worked hard for it, to have a home here in my hometown still um, that I purchased before I got married and, and kept it, and so it's here. And I said, listen, I'm gonna get a ticket and fly across the country, which is where I am now, in my home, um, in my office, um, in Wilmington, Delaware. And I said, I need to be by myself for two weeks so that I can take some things off the plate and I need you to help me. I need you to help me. I need you to take over the homeschooling, the cooking, the cleaning, the um, you know managing the family while I'm gone so that I can just focus on my business and just focus on my training. As, as a matter of fact, my, my uh, bodybuilding coach is here and my team. So I get to train with them. I get to be in that full focused um, uh, energy because we can't give 100% of our energy to everything at the same time. You know that. You might be able to, to do really good with one or two things. And that's what I'm doing now. But you can't do it with all of them. 
So my husband said, awesome, I got you, go ahead. So here I am, I'm like day three into my healthy, selfish time. And as you can imagine, I'm already more productive. I already feel more relaxed. My, my training and my results are already showing, like they're already showing a market improvement because that's what happens when you stop trying to shove everything in. And the family's doing fine. So if you are feeling frustrated, angry, depressed, annoyed, um, scattered, then ask yourself this question. Do I, is it time for me to carve out some healthy, selfish time? And here's something I want you to begin with. It's an exercise that I just took my clients through. And this could be very eye-opening and maybe even hurtful for some of you. But I'm going to give you the, the tools to do it, the instructions to do it, and you can continue to do it after this Facebook Live. And I hope that you might be um, vulnerable enough to share inside of, or share on the comments, you know, what was an eye opener for you. And if you don't feel comfortable sharing in the comments, please just send me a private message or an email um, so that I can support you in whatever feelings come up for you. Okay, so get a piece of paper. You're gonna write, you're gonna do three columns. Okay, you guys with me? Three columns. At the top of each column, you're gonna write um, a word. Column one, happiness. Column two, goals. Column three, financials, money, abundance, whatever represents, um, you know, your financial well-being. So we've got happiness, goals, and financials, okay? The reason we're doing this exercise is so that you can sort out the people in your life that you're giving energy to. Now, we're not going to talk about things that could be sucking up your energy. That's a different type of um, live and a different topic, right? Like social media, all that kind of stuff, video games, all of those are energy suckers um, and drainers, right? But we're talking about people. So we're going to sort out the people in your life. So you've got your three columns. In each of those columns, I want you to write the names of the people who are contributing to those areas. So the people in your life who are contributing to your happiness, write them, write their names. The people who are contributing to your goals. Don't forget, you know, the people that you're, that you're paying, your coaches, um, your mentors, uh, you know, maybe you're in masterminds. Many of you here are entrepreneurs like I am, um, your coaches, if you're, you're, if you're in fitness, things like that. So they would fall under your goals. They may or may not fall under happiness, right? Um, and here's the thing. Each person doesn't have to go across every single category. They may. But that's not what this is about. You're going to identify who is contributing to your happiness, who's contributing to your goals, and who's contributing to your financial well-being, your financial growth, your abundance, your earning potential. Okay? When you're done doing all of that, you're going to take a really good look at your list. Okay? And if there are people in your life there are people in your life that you're giving your energy, your time, your resources to who are not in one of those three columns. You get to ask yourself, why are they there? Why are they in my life? And what am I going to do about it? Right? Like how much of my energy, my time, my resources are they taking from me? considering they don't even contribute to one of these three columns. And I'll tell you what, when I did this again recently with my mentor, Tim Grover, I got an eye opener that was very, you know, sad for me to see someone who didn't make the list. And you may get that as well. 
It's a really, really valuable exercise. If you're someone who wants to stop leaking energy in your life, you want to get more laser focused so that the energy that you are putting into the people, into the projects, the goals, the ambitions that you have, all of that energy is getting funneled into something positive and fruitful as opposed to sapping your energy, your resources. Because that's exhausting. It's draining. It creates resentment. It creates anger. It, it puts you in this martyrdom that you actually can't live up to. It has you start living for others instead of yourself. And listen, you know, I'm a Christian woman. I completely understand and, and, and respect and love the whole concept of contributing and of being of service, right? And I know that God fuels, you know, the, the gifts that I have. And so I use them to be of service. But here's the thing. You cannot be of great value and service to the people who really need it the most if you're leaking energy all over the place to people and things that don't value that that don't appreciate that, that aren't using it for good, for value, right? Like how many people have you been trying to help, um, give all your time and attention to, and there's, there's nothing on the other end to show for it. It's more of a take, right? And so you've got to be the leader in your life and in your energy. And you've got to refuel. You need moments where you are creating healthy, selfish time to replenish for your family, to replenish for your health and fitness goals, to replenish for your business goals, your career goals. And here's the sad truth. The greatest winners, the, the most successful people, honestly, they have the least amount of friends, quote unquote, close friends. It's just the way that it is because they're not spending all this time going out there trying to be liked by everybody. They know what they're good at. They're focused their energy on that. And they know the people that are in their lives who are also contributing to them. And that's really how you can be the most useful out in the world. If you're worried about being liked and that's where you're making all your decisions, you will likely disappoint everyone, including yourself including yourself. So I hope that this message was timely for you and that it's eye-opening in some way that you can use and apply today in a practical way. Where are you leaking energy? Is it time for you to take some healthy, selfish time like I'm doing right now? And are there people who are taking away from your time, energy, and resources who don't make one of those three columns? And what will you do about it? I look forward to seeing your feedback in the comments and or send me an email or a private message so that I can support you in whatever comes up for you from this exercise. Go out and have an incredible day, everyone. Lots of love to you. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.